Hello everyone and welcome to Pyanodon's Mods. This is Otaku Showboat and in this tutorial I'll be going over the Chromium plus Goal processing chain. As usual, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to help make this tutorial series visible higher up in search results. You can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash otaku showboat, on Twitter at otaku showboat, and visit my website at otakushowboat.com. You can help support my continued existence and help to accelerate the production of these tutorials by becoming a patron on Patreon at patreon.com slash otaku showboat. You can also directly help support the development of the Pyanodon's Mods suite by becoming a patron on Patreon at patreon.com slash Pyanodon. As a disclaimer, this mod suite is in a constant state of flux, so any numbers I present may change. Some mechanics and balancing may change. Uh, the mods for this particular save file are nearly identical to what I use for my current initial planned on stream save, the list of which is on my website's stream schedule page linked below this video. The only primary difference is that I am using the Infinity mod to help to showcase these processing chains. So with that said, let's get into the Chromium slash gold overview. So, Chromium is different than everything else we've seen thus far. In some respects, it's also very familiar in terms of the actual mechanics of the chain. And you can see that Chromium itself is relatively short uh, for a chain, but the thing about Chromium is that once you get past the... Uh, the ore phase. Once you once you get past hot air processing of ores, you are going to only really be getting chromium out of chromite sand. So everything that I'm presenting in this chain will somehow make its way into chromite sand at the various tech levels. And eventually, you will convert all of your chromite sand into molten chromium. So, molten chromium basically only exists out of chromite sand, reduced chromium, and sintered chromium. There is no direct high grade to molten for chromium. It is all out of chromite sand. And as you go up the chain for chromium, you will get more and more chromite sand as an output uh, until you eventually reach your high-grade processing at Blue Science, which will give you the most chromite sand of the chain as an output, and then you have to convert all of that sand into molten to then cast as whatever you want to end up casting your chromium on uh, between it self as chromium or as the uh, alloys. There is a tin chromium alloy as well as a ferro chromium alloy uh, that you can make out of chromium. So reduction will take all of your chromite sand to re become reduced and then sintering will center that reduced, one reduced into two centered. Uh, in the end, so that is the only time where it starts to look more familiar. But otherwise, at every step along the way, you can make things into chromite sand. Now, what building is that, you may ask? Chromite sand is done in solid separators for the most part, but also scrubbers or evaporators uh, in the case of this solution. Now, chromite solution we will get to, but know that chromite solution is what will be used in the gold chain. But if, for some reason, you either cannot yet do gold, which is the case because gold, the gold chain unlocks at purple science, or you have sufficient amounts of gold, you can convert your excess chromite solution directly into sand to add uh, extra value 
uh, to the amount of chromium that you're using. I will also say that chromium is one of the most used metals overall, but you won't access it in the incredibly early game. So like with the aluminium and the lead and the titanium, you will not need chromium for some time. In fact, you only need chromium as you're thinking about setting up green science. So this will be a thing that you need going into going into green science. So definitely bear that in mind. Also, chromium. When you start mining chromium, it will need syngas to mine chromium. Uh, and therefore, the ground boring recipe will require syngas and drilling fluid two if you are so choosing to do any amount of ground boring whatsoever uh, but yeah chromium very important you will need a lot of it. it this is like second only to iron uh it's if i would ha hazard a guess by in the like blue science mid game range it's iron then chromium and then like copper and tin uh, in terms of the order of uh just amounts of stuff that you need uh, that are demanded going forward. Uh, so you'll you'll need a lot of chromium, so bear that in mind. So, as I was saying, you only really need it going into green science. Like, you can pretty much, from what I can tell, you can set up circuits before you set up chromium. Like, you can set up circuit 1 automation before chromium, but you will need chromium going into the uh going into green science because if i'm not mistaken they uh the chromium plates as i'll call them chromium is used to make the buildings for rubber so for rubber it is you need multi-purpose crackers you need a heavy oil refinery this is what it is uh in order to make rubber for your green science chain you will need the heavy oil refinery and that's going to need chromium but otherwise you don't need chromium you also need a reformer Re the reformer is used to make the carbon black and then the actual heavy oil refinery is used to make the actual rubber itself uh, and then you need the steam cracker the multi-purpose cracker uh, to make one of the gases that's actually going to consume a little bit of titanium uh, to make a uh, chemical that will be used to make uh, rubber for you. Uh, and then the, uh, as I said, the reformer is for the carbon black for the rubber. Uh, and you'll need to shove in either tar or crude oil. I suggest tar, uh, unless you have crude oil uh, near you that you want to grab if you have a if you have a small oil patch and have the resources to build the small oil derricks uh which you should at that point then do that but i am i am massively digressing now so the er the earliest point you need chromium is for heavy oil refineries for rubber for green science uh is my point here which means, which means you have the option to completely skip even the hot air processing step here and go straight into G1 and go straight into G1. You'll need a metric F ton of solid separators for this to actually process three per second of the G1 because it is 3 per second of G1 for a yellow belt. Syngas, by the way, is very simple. It is converting coal gas into syngas, and it actually feeds back some tar uh, and can use productivity modules later. So just uh, as a point of reference, the recipes 
for Syngas, which will, by the way, get better over time once you unlock the ability to add oxygen. Uh, because there is a more Syngas with oxygen recipe that converts coal gas into even more Syngas by adding oxygen into the mix. Uh, but initially, you will be getting your Syngas by just straight up coal gas to Syngas, plus a little bit of tar that can feed back into the coal gas. So it there is a little bit of a geometric series there that helps to offset the cost of Syngas, and both of those the coal gas and the syngrass recipes later will be able to use productivity modules. So bear that in mind. That's very important to note because with high tier productivity modules, it doesn't quite get to the point where it perpetually feeds itself enough tar. It doesn't quite get there but it does have a massive outs offset uh through the power of productivity modules a and because i've said this by just for reference the reason why i say i have the disclaimer at the start of these videos is because everything i say can and will change uh and every time i point things out like this on the syngas that may change uh, so don't be surprised if later on down the line you see, oh, hey, I can't put productivity modules in these recipes anymore for coal gas and syngas because it's a little powerful. But I digress again. So you're going to end up with nine chromite sand here. Now, the actual chromite sand has to be directly casted at this point in the game uh, into chromium. Uh, and with 9 per second, we've got exactly 3 plates per second out. So you can think of your red science or into G1 plus stone. That's all you really get. We'll give you 3 plates per second. Going down the line here... The G1 will convert into 2 and 3. The 2 will go back to 1. So here we have a geometric series. A feedback loop. The G3 combined total G3. So you're, ha you're going to have to convert all of the G2 output from the G1 to 3. Ultimately, we'll end up in 3. So you're... Some total that you're looking, that you're solving for, ultimately, will end up being the uh, amount of G3 uh, out. So you're you're looking for the sum total of G1, but you're going to calculate how much of that sum total of G1 will end up as G3. Uh, going forward into G3 to G4 into... Uh, with rejects. And guess what? The rejects will also go back into G3. So again, you're going to calculate the sum total of G3 in from this geometric series to calculate the amount of G4 out. And uh, that's where you end at green science. Uh, if I bring up chromium processing, level 1 ends with the G1 chromite into sand into place. The level 2 We'll give you grade 3 and 4. There's no point to the grade 3. I'm just going to point that out. There is no point to the uh, chromite sand from grade 3. Always, 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 always do grade 4. There is zero point to the grade 3. It shouldn't even exist, honestly. Like, it's so useless that it should not exist. Uh, but, anyway... So here, and you're still going to be directly casting the chromite sand. At Blue Science, you're going to get access to your first molten chromium recipes, all the way up to reduced. You're not going to be able to do reduced until, uh, at the very least, purple science. Like, at the very least purple, uh, if not close enough to yellow so bear that in mind you're you're still delayed at blues if like if you're just on blue science and you've just unlocked 
Chromium ore processing, you're not going to be able to go all the way up to reduced yet. Uh, but it is technically available to you at blue. Uh, so, effectively, you will do this chromite sand molten recipe, uh, and you can go all the way up to uh, pulp 7 to make your chromite sand. Yes, there is high chromite, but high chromite is not the end state. The end state, I do think, is the pulp 7. Yes, the end state is pulp 7 into chromite sand, so that will give you the most overall amount of chromite sand uh, of this chain to then convert into molten to then cast however you want at blue. When you can do reduction later, like after purple science, just because of the requirements for the casting units for reference, then you can do your reduction into reduced chromium and start doing the molten for that. It really isn't too big of an increase, I think, but it is an increase nonetheless of uh, efficiency. And then, of course, at yellow science, you get your sintering from reduced uh, into the most amount of, uh, of molten. It will be a humongous, humongous boost. Humongous. So. One reduced into 100 molten every four. So, one into 100 every four. One into 150 every four, and bear in mind that you get two centered for every one reduced. So, you've just tripled your molten. You've just tripled your molten at uh, Utility Science uh, by going into centering from reduced. So let's actually have a look at the rest of this before actually physically looking at the actual chain itself. Uh, so up to G4, remember that uh, G4 can go into your chromite sand, and that is where you will stop at green science. At blue science, as you make your way up into pulp 7 chromite sand, you're going to convert into pulp 1. The pulp 1 will become high chromite and chromite solution. As I said, chromite solution is an ingredient in the, uh, it, it is the beginning point of the gold processing chain, but at blue science, you will not be able to do the gold processing chain yet. That is unlocked at purple science, but there is the recipe that you will have access to to make chromite solution directly into additional chromite sand. Your high chromite will become processed chromite and pulp two. So processed and pulp two, the processed will convert back into high chromite. So here again is another geometric series. So yet another geometric series to solve for uh, solving for the sum total of high chromite converting into pulp two. The pulp two will go into three, three into four and five. The four will go into six and more chromite solution. Six will go into five with high chromite. So another geometric series uh, going here, high chromite, back into processed, feeding into this geometric series again. So you've got a geometric series that has a geometric series within it. Yay. Ultimately, you're going to get a whole bunch of Pulp 5 that will convert into Pulp 6. Or 7, I should say. Pulp 7. And then Pulp 7 into your Chromite Sand. And that is where your Blue Science effectively will end until you can make a direct reduction plants. DRPs. These require circuit board threes and super steel to make. That is why I say that you will probably not be in blue science anymore by the time you can make these. You will most likely be in purple science by this point, uh, which is your production science. Uh, just because super steel is going to require you to have set up 
some form of fuel rods, some form of molybdenum at scale, some form of vanadium at scale, as well as some silicon at scale. And I'll cover all of those when the time comes. Uh, but that's actually the easy part, considering that circuit board threes requires things that you have seen before at circuit board twos, but is going to also require gold, and gold is a purple science tech, effectively, unless you are going to particle accelerate the proton, uh, particle accelerate the production of gold from silver using some proton donors. So if you've just, like, we're, by the time you're here, you are already, like, on the border of uh, getting purple science. So, yeah, it's like, well, if you're, you effectively have purple science by the time you unlock reduction. And this is why I suggest to Pyanodon, just put reduction processes in purple science. Split off, make a new tech across the board for every ore type that has a reduction step that is currently either tied to blue or yellow science. Pull that out, stick it in purple science, because purple science is when you will effectively be able to first make reduction, and it actually gives a point to reduction for a number of these chains, uh, because there is going to be a gap in time where you will be at purple science and you will not be at utility science yet. You will be setting up your utility science after having done purple. Uh, by the way, from what I can tell, utility is actually a little bit easier than how it first appears, uh, if you've already set up purple, but that's a point for another time. Uh, it would make more sense to have that as its own little discrete section of, hey, I now have reduced at purple science, and then I have centering at yellow, uh, and there, there's a nice... it. It's a progression that actually gives point to doing reduction and actually casting at reduction. Uh, because, yeah. I mean, here you're already going to have purple, basically, uh, to do the gold that you need for your circuit threes. And then if we go into, like, the resistor threes, like, you're, you're not going to have some of this at blue science. You're not going to have phosphate ga glass yet. You're going to have to make it, although you'll, you'll have everything... That's used to make phosphate glass by this point. Uh, similarly, similarly with epoxy, you'll have a lot of the base ingredients or the ability to make the base ingredients for this stuff. Because ultimately, a lot of these base ingredients you will have either by blue science or shortly thereafter. Uh, it's really the gold that is the biggest uh, issue here uh, that you won't really have access to until purple science in any major degree unless you set up some uh, particle accelerator stuff shenanigans. And then the chromite sand, no matter how you get it, will reduce and then reduced will become centered, will center. So that is the chromium chain. Chromite solution into gold. First it will mix, then it will uh, go into fines from the mix. The fines will become concentrate. The concentrate will become prepared chromium. The prepared chromium will become chromium plus chromium rejects. So... This step this step right here, prepared chromium into chromium rejects, is in a casting unit for a reason, because you are going to end up with additional chromium plates here. Actual chromium plates here. So just adding into the uh complexity. Uh chances are you might be backed up on chromium. You might back up on chromium. Just just gonna say that you, you might back up on chromium. 
uh, at this point in the game. You, there are a lot of things that use Chromium that you might not have set up yet. So at least for a time, you may need more gold than your ability to consume Chromium will allow. Uh, which means that you will flat out need to burn Chromium plates. Specifically at this step, you might want to consider just burning these plates and then after the chromite solution, which will end up at with pulp six. I think venting excess pulp six will keep it going perpetually. I think that's the earliest point where you can overflow valve and vent. Uh, we'd be at pulp six. Unless you... Unless you want to keep the... You know what? No, don't do the six. Do the five to... Uh, do the excess five to keep the geometric series feeding on itself to get additional chromite solution. Yeah, keep the geometric series, but void out excess pulp 5 until, unless and until you have enough gold, in which case then don't worry about it. Void. Convert your excess chromite solution into chromium once you have uh, enough gold. So from here, the rejects will become gold precipitate, which will become concentrate, which will become second precipitate, which will become solution, which will become purified gold, which will become gold plates. This does not change. This is at purple science. You get access to the whole thing at purple science. There's no way to improve it. This was recently buffed to double the output very recently buffed to double the output at least i think it's double or so or something like that uh because it was very weak by comparison to the uh particle accelerator recipe so it has been very much strengthened and now you can pretty much make as much as you need once you have access to it at purple science so let's have a look let's have a look so red science to g1 gives you stone You'll have to deal with the stone in some way. The uh, G1 into G2 and 3 is simple, but the G2 to 1 will also have gravel. So geometric series with gravel at green science uh, as, uh, as an output to deal with. Here we've got the chromite. You're going to need water in here. Uh, and then the rejects back to G3, another geometric series. To make your pulp one, so now we're at, here we are at blue science, and as with blue science across the board, also uh, keeping in mind here the uh, ratios of things, 27 to do your G1 to get 9, 15 to get a little bit more at G3, but you're going to ignore that and just go up to G4 and get a lot versus versus 9, 16, 16, so you gain a couple of extra plates per second at green science. Uh, not gonna bother with this high chromite, because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, you're gonna go all the way up to pulp 7 now, at blue science. <laughs> so, this initial step is going to need sodium hydroxide in. Now there is a nice little way to get sodium hydroxide uh, through what is known as the slacked lime loop, uh, which will basically convert coke into sodium hydroxide for you. Uh, the slacked lime into sodium hydroxide recipe
produces enough limestone out to make the amount of slacked lime in. So you are spending less salt overall, but you are also spending coke in. And as I've said several times in previous tutorials, coke from coal from mushrooms. Coke from coal from mushrooms. In fact, to do things most efficiently, you will have a whole bunch of mushrooms being converted into the coal. You will take some of that coal and you will do destructive distillation column processing of that coal into coke plus tar plus coal gas. You will take that tar and you will make saline water in a quenching tower and evaporate that saline water into salt to feed this. The remaining amount of coal that is being produced from your mushroom farms or additional coal from even more mushroom farms will be converted into coke the efficient way through the red hot coke chain and from the red hot coke chain which gives you a lot more coke that will feed into your uh, sodium hydroxide slacked lime loop because you will need coke to convert your limestone into lime it is one to one and then one lime makes 10 slacked lime uh, and this will give you 15 coke you'll also get some carbon dioxide out of this by, by the way so you're consuming coke basically uh, and then a little bit of water to make your slacked lime uh, and salt so spending some coke and salt uh, this is a much better use of your time than getting sodium hydroxide through splitting saline water. Uh, this will be far more efficient than splitting saline water. There are places in here that you can use productivity modules, but you will actually you will actually have to void or otherwise use excess limestone because it will start producing excess limestone with uh, with productivity modules all along the way uh, so there's your sodium hydroxide the next thing the next step making high chromite is going to need this stuff called aero float 15 now this is the first time we have seen aero float 15 i don't believe that it will be the last time and it will not be the last time that we see uh chrysilic acid so Aerofloat 15 requires aromatics, which I have covered. It is mushrooms plus Relesia. That is my number one most recommended recipe for getting aromatics. Uh, of course, then the uh, related chemical olefins can be made directly from aromatics as well. So this is my recommendation of aromatics and olefins is just... Mushrooms and Relesia. Mushrooms and Relesia into aromatics. That is the way. The number one way you have infinite amounts of aromatics. Crisilic acid, though, and phosphorus, phosphorus pentasulfide. Phosphorus pentasulfide is sulfur plus phosphate rocks. Sulfur plus phosphate rocks, and it will need a lot like it will need a lot if you plan on doing the full 60 per second on aeroflow 15 but as you can see here even just the standard flotation cells like you can see you don't need much like you you don't need much you're only like getting two out of the g4 in total, you're only really getting about the two out on the G4 in some total. Just in some total, it is the, uh, it is two. So, eh. It's like 20 pulp one, so, like, okay, 20 pulp one, that's even less than eight. So, like, cut that by a lot near enough a factor of 10, factor of 9, 
and we can see that eh, it's it's not much. Like even one point two divided by six, let's say, is point two. Like okay, well, point two. Let's actually use modules that you would have by this point in time, uh, which I would suggest doing. So like, really point point two five here from just two furnaces. That's three and a half phosphate rock. It's not insignificant considering at uh, Blue Science you have no access to an infinite supply of phosphate rocks yet. That is done through the power of this recipe in the bioreactor that you will only get access to at Purple Science uh, after picking up the nanotechnology tech. And, and this is your infinite phosphate rocks quotes there because that amount of collagen is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly uh, prohibitive. Um, this is a prohibitive amount of collagen to think about doing phosphate rocks infinitely at scale, um, although it is your only option if you don't want to mine phosphate rocks. This is your only option. The only one. Absolutely un only one. Frankly, this recipe is way out of whack. Way out of whack. The, the amount that you get out of this, even with four productivity three modules which you need circuit threes to get, by the way. But you should be able to make them because you'll have purple science by the time you get access to bioreactors. This is way too much collagen. Like, seriously. This is way too much collagen. Like, a factor of four, I would say, too much collagen. Like, this should be... This takes 10 collagen per cycle. That should be like 3 or 4 at most. Like 3 would be good. 3 or 4 units for this. Match it with bone meal. 3 and 3 and then keep the sulfuric acid. That's fine. Because 10 is too much. Like with Pi Alien Life, okay? Let's make this clear. With Pi Alien Life, it will be a lot easier to get collagen because you will have access to a bunch of recipes that can give you just skin to feed collagen. And you won't have to deal with this massive amount of byproducts from your massive amount of zipier, really slow zipier uh, rendering and growth in the artificial reefs to even get even remotely close to just the 9.8 collagen and you need collagen for a lot of other things so yeah this this is just too much like this is just too much on the collagen uh it should be like three maybe four but definitely less like it should be more than halved the amount of collagen needed for this just to keep things sane like you want it it should be expensive it should be expensive on the uh like say i want a yellow belt of phosphate rocks it should be somewhat expensive but like come on that's a lot it is a lot of phosphoric acid though um that is also given here uh, maybe scale it back to like 10 on the phosphoric acid and then scale back the collagen requirement by a similar amount. So 10 phosphoric acid and 3-ish collagen. 3 collagen, 10 phosphoric acid out. Maybe make it an even uh, a uh, 5 on the rocks or keep it at 4, won't necessarily matter at that point, but yeah. Needs adjustment. Also, it's really slow as it is. This recipe is like 
snail's pace for the output that it is, but that's a huge digression. I will talk about that more when we cover the actual phosphoric processing chain, uh, getting phosphoric acid and all of that. Uh, so that is the uh, pentasulfide here, the phosphorus pentasulfide. It also needs, it also needs pyrite. Pyrite you will make out of. Uh, uh, I guess at this point at Blue Science, you may all you may or may not already be making automating your solar panels. Uh, you'll need pyrite for solar panels. It's sulfur and iron oxide, and by this point in the game, you already likely have production of iron oxide. That's dedicated production of iron oxide to feed into ferrite for your circuit two chain. Chrysalic acid needs. Nexlet, phenol, and creosote. Nexlet, phenol, and creosote. And bear in mind, you only need like eight units, like like eight units ish uh, of this on the output to feed 15 per second on the chromium chain going forward. So it's a bit of phenol. Uh, coal plus filtration media, probably the easiest way at this point in the game uh, for phenol uh, in that particular recipe. You you have the option of doing the cumian route and getting some acetone out of it. I, I say just get your... If you, if you need acetone, just get it through tholins. Uh, but that is the only uh, real other way of getting acetone is uh, through the phenol recipe from cumian. Um, otherwise, I say just get, just get your phenol out of coal and uh, filtration media. Next lit, we'll cover the next lit chain just tailings. Tailings is all I'll really say to that. Uh, and then of course creosote, which is from tar. And I've already covered how to get tar. So chrysalic acid, very very simple overall uh, to make. Uh, combine them with aromatics to get your arrow float 15. This is like the most complex thing uh, in this chromium chain, which is why I've spent so much time talking about it. This step only uses eight. I think there might be one other step that uses it going forward here. We shall see. My memory is failing me. My memory has failed me. I, I'm not seeing anything else on this particular chain, but just know that you will need it for some other chains as well, or at least one other chain as well later on. Uh, just like you will need uh, chrysilic by itself later on. So once you have your Aerofloat 15, it's just pretty simple. You get your uh, chromite solution as well as your high chromite. High chromite into processed plus pulp 2. The processed back into high chromite with sand as a byproduct. Here you're going to need organic solvent. I will always going into the future suggest organic solvent to do the recipe of acetone the acetone based organic solvent recipe uh, done in the vanilla oil refinery syngas plus acetone uh, it gives you ammonia also which is fantastic you can make use of that extra ammonia you get half as much ammonia as you do the organic solvent but uh yeah at this at this scale in the amount of organic solvent it is very low next the next step we'll need methanol again methanol i've actually been you know what i'll go ahead and show you I have been designing something over here, and it involves some methanol somewhere. Somewhere over the rainbow. So, methanol. My current suggestion on methanol would actually be the fluid separator recipe converting organic solvent and olefins into methanol and petroleum gas. That is my current suggestion on source of methanol. Why? Why this recipe over the one that is methanol and syngas? Because 
this recipe uses a huge amount of Nexlet plates. Uh, which you may or may not want. Uh, getting the 100 methanol per second is 5 plates per second. Uh, and just for reference here, even 1,200 units per second of tailings converting into Nexilit? Yeah, it's not really going to give you a lot. Just, just at scale here. What if you need a lot more than 100 units of methanol per second? It adds up really fast uh, on the Nexlet plates. And chances are this recipe would end up being your number one consumer of Nexlet in your entire factory. When instead, you can feed it out of organic solvent and olefins, which I've already told you, olefins are made directly from the aromatics, which can be directly from mushrooms and Rilesia. Whereas the organic solvent, as I have said, is syngas and acetone, which you can do your acetone. This is, this is like absurdly big, but you can do your acetone from tholins from tholins just a few tholins just a just a few tholins uh to get the uh, acetone for your organic solvent you'll end up with an excess of ammonia and for your syngas well productivity module ones bear in mind i am using a mod that will increase the number of module slots so that's another that's another thing entirely i'm using a mod that changes module slot counts so your mileage will vary uh, if you're not using the exact settings that I am. But yeah, it's, it's because this has a tar output, it ends up helping to feed itself. And both of these have module slots for the productivity modules. But anyway, it, it it's good, okay? It's really good. It's really, really, really good. It's really, 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 really good. And it gives you a whole metric F ton of methanol. And then, of course, the olefins uh, to feed it uh, is uh, from aromatics into olefins. Bearing in mind, again, all level 1 productivity modules here. Relesia, ultimately from water, ultimately from water on the hydrogen side of things. And the, uh, the mushrooms, this is like 180-something mushrooms. Uh, plantations be being fed into the uh, the aromatics and yeah that's there's your methanol plus you end up with the, an identical amount of petroleum gas uh, so yeah there there's your methanol uh, and this of course makes four and five four into six just needs tar six into five will end up being glycerol. Now, glycerol, only one method besides tholins, or shall we say two methods besides tholins that are not nice, uh, and then you get some out of your oleochemicals. So you can steal some forever you do from wherever you're doing oleochemicals. Otherwise, no. No. Just say no to uh, spending collagen on glycerol, uh, tholins, tholins, uh, just say no to, uh, to anything using collagen, it is not balanced very well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a, make a very, very specific statement and say that collagen is not balanced very well in terms of its overall footprint to, uh, to feed it to feed its production. It is it is not particularly well balanced in terms of the amount of space it consumes. So try to avoid every circumstance where you need collagen uh, as much as possible. Use it for ground boring. Use it for ground boring. And anything required for science. And that's it. Don't anything optional besides that, do a hard pass. Find another way. 
Uh, the next step, five into seven, is just water. And then reduction is different. Reduction is different compared to every other reduction recipe that we've seen besides, I, I think, aluminium was slightly different as well. Here is another exception. Here on reduction, we do not need sodium sulfate, nor do we need diesel. We need sodium hydroxide and light oil with our pressured air uh, when reducing our chromite sand. So definitely bear that in mind. You need different outside inputs on reduction for chromium. And then centering is the same. Sin gas, pressured air, fuel, and lime, as we have seen before. Chromium has two alloys with it. Uh, of course, you're going to be getting metric F-tons at the end if you go all the way up to centering. Ferrochromium alloy, very important. Very important for stainless steel as well as some other processes along the line. Ferro. F-E-C-R. Yeah. Figured. Uh, F-E is iron. C-R is chromium. It is used in molten stainless steel as well as resistor 2s, which is circuit 2s. So you'll need a fair amount. Like, you'll need a lot of ferrochromium alloy. Like, just the sheer amount of stainless steel that you're going to need to feed into super steel later on. It, you, you need a lot. Fortunately, the molten recipe is incredibly efficient. It is very nice uh, and fits well with balance. <clears> hmm. <throat> Fits well with balance. AKA, please don't touch my ferrochromium alloy recipe. Uh, as I've said before, tin chromium is not. Actually, it's probably SN. Yeah, SNCR. Tin chromium. Not as good. Uh, I prefer avoiding catalyst type recipes like this. Uh, whenever possible. There are great recipes here that will avoid space usage. They're efficient in terms of the amount of space usage, but still, I, I say to avoid catalyst recipes like this uh, as much as possible. So, ignore. And ignore tin chromium alloy overall and then of course you'll have metric f tons of chromium now gold this is going to be a long video because we need gold gold is next very long video i know we're like 50 minutes in 52 ish minutes in let's wrap this up uh pretty quickly because gold is very straightforward gold chromite solution in hydrogen peroxide you have hydrogen peroxide by now Hydrogen peroxide, one way to get it, nickel and ethroquinone. Hydrogen peroxide is used in etching solution, which is how I know that you have this by now, because you need etching solution for circuit twos, let alone all this other crap that it's used for. Anthroquinone is chromium. <laughs> is chromium on a chain that is making chromium? Cough, cough. Aromatics and liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen is going to need a little bit of gasoline. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty much free. Gasoline is also technically free. Just going to throw out there. By this time, you also have access to the kerogen recipe. And you can make kerogen out of drill heads and coke. I actually really like... I'm actually a fan, by the way, of this recipe. I'm, I'm a fan of this. I haven't gotten to the point where I can play around with this yet. But I'm, I'm a fan of it. This one is, like, winner, winner uh, for gasoline. Uh, next lit, olefins, light oil, hydrogen, IC, tailings, mushrooms, tar, a.k.a. mushrooms, and uh, water. So water, 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 and water uh, overall for this uh, to make uh, gasoline. And Well, correction, I see the chains that stem from water that are relatively reasonable in terms of overall footprint 
uh, here. I'm, I'm, I see only things that have a reasonable-ish footprint by my standards, uh, and not anything incredibly extreme here. There's nothing too extreme in terms of overall footprint here. Next, gravel in. Well, oh boy, gravel. Yeah, you... Lot, lots of ways to get gravel. You, probably the easiest in terms of space is just iron sticks to gravel, or iron sticks to stone to gravel, or something along those lines. No, iron sticks to gravel, I think it's more efficient than uh, stone to gravel. Uh, so that's simple. Sulfuric acid, you know this by now. Chlorine, uh, tholins. Tholin chlorine, only. Only ever tholin chlorine. Little bit of chromium is output going into your rejects. Rejects into your precipitate, just add water. Just add cyanic acid in this next step. Cyanic acid. Urea. Urea into cyanic plus ammonia. Like, yeah, you know this by now. Hey, look, it's, uh, it's our good friend, the sulfuric acid again. Hey, guess what you're making if you're doing the, uh, if you're doing organic solvent, uh, based methanol, if you're doing the organic solvent based methanol, guess what you have a lot of? If you said petroleum gas, you would be right. If you said petroleum gas, you would be right. And, uh, yeah, guess what petroleum gas makes, helps convert into? Yeah, sulfur and sulfuric acid, so... Uh, there's a there's a thing you you spend a little bit of uh, stuff there, iron, for that particular process. But yeah, it's like okay, you have a root for the sulfuric acid, and hey, guess what the byproduct is that you're making uh, that you're making all that organic solvent out of? Yes, it's ammonia. But you can also do urea to make ammonia. So there's that too. Uh, coal dust, just kill coal. Just kill coal. Uh, hey, you know that process that I mentioned about converting, uh, or about the, uh, slacked lime loop? Do you remember me talking about that slacked lime loop that you might want to do to make sodium hydroxide? That's required back here? Yeah, it's the, y you're gonna have a whole bunch of coal dust if you do the, uh, red hot coke. To feed the coke for the slacked lime loop. Like, hey, and, and, and then here's a consumer of coal dust. It's all connected! It's all interwoven, man! It's as if he had a plan describing all of these things. I didn't actually have a plan. Anyway. Next up, the uh, final step here before we actually make the plates. This is going to be the most expensive of the steps. It's going to require iron, oxide, nichrome, and graphite. Graphite, free from coke from mushrooms that's fine nichrome pretty expensive overall but you're quite literally making the night the chromium here you're quite literally making the molten chromium from this chain so think of it as adding just a little bit of nickel into the system overall and then iron oxide you should be flooded with this at this point in the game just gonna throw that out there you should be flooded with uh iron oxide at this point in the game and then actual casting is uh oxygen and fuel that's all you really need in here you just just add oxygen and fuel and you're you're gonna you're gonna end up with a little bit of gold a little bit of gold now if you are using bob's modules you're gonna need to have a lot of gold if you are not using Bob's modules, you're probably going to eventually back up on gold. Um, that's just going to be the long and short of it. You're probably going to have a much higher chromium demand than gold demand overall as you approach the late game. Uh, so, as I said, you're probably going to want to overflow valve the chromite solution from the start of this gold chain uh, to make more chromium. There is alternative that is available to get gold at blue science versus at purple, and that is through the power of 
proton donors and proton acceleration. Converting silver into gold. It's an option. And that's about all I'll really say here is that it's an option if you're doing high grade lead processing of a yellow belt of lead it's like five total silver played out so if you're willing to spend some of that silver to get a bit of gold out of it a little bit more than what you put in and if you're willing to spend the uh the boron and rayon and cermit on the proton donors uh and the crystal graphic substrate for the proton donors uh, proton donors specifically are crystallographic substrate plus boron which we have covered in a previous tutorial and is actually in case you're wondering what all of this is for this whole setup that i've been working on is for boron uh like just boron just boron without outside inputs like doing l everything involved in the entire chain in from water is what i'm working on right now uh for my stream save but that aside rayon is also pretty huge in its uh overall footprint so maybe maybe not on the uh gold there are there are much better recipes to do now now that the uh, output has been greatly buffed on the gold from the chromium chain there are much better uses of particle accelerator recipes than uh, converting silver into gold. However, there's always a however, and this will be the last point that I really make here. If you want uranium ore without mining it, the particle accelerator recipe for uranium ore requires gold. And it is a one to one ratio of gold in to uranium out so if you want to particle accelerate gold into uranium there is the option to do just that and this is uh, the only real method of infinite uranium ore this is really the only method of infinite uranium ore it's either through particle acceleration mining or from rare earth processing which guess what there's no way of getting rare earth infinitely period full stop and this was actually recently nerfed to be less output of uranium as a uh, byproduct of the rare earth chain uh, no current way of getting rare earth ores outside of mining rare earth without pi alien life uh, which has yet to release so in the current state of the pi suite the only real way to do uranium infinitely is particle accelerate it from gold so if you were interested in a reason to use your gold, if you have a lot more gold than you know what to do with, think about making some uranium out of it to help to feed your nuclear samples for your purple science. That is probably a pretty decent idea. Maybe. I have to look at the uh, space that that requires, but outside of that... We have reached the end of today's tutorial and overview of the chromium and gold processing chains. I have been Otaku Shibut. I would like to thank you all for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to help keep this video tutorial series higher up in search results. You can follow me over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash otaku showboat. You can follow me on Twitter at Otaku Showboat, as well as visit my website at otakushowboat.com to read some companion tutorials, written tutorials, to go with this video series. You can help to support my continued existence, as well as help to 
accelerate the production of these tutorials by becoming a patron on Patreon at patreon.com slash otakushowboat, and you can help to fund the continued development of these mods at patreon.com slash planeton. Our next tutorial is going to be Circuit Ones. It's finally arrived. Our next tutorial will be Circuit Ones, followed by Green Science, and I hope to see you all then. Mm -hmm.